Well, greetings, ISDS 2000 business statistics students, particularly the online students. But I'm going to share this video with our traditional classroom section as well as a way to jumpstart our review of the syllabus. Um, I'm including as an attachment to the email a, um, uh, a copy of the syllabus. You can find a link to this uh, inside of PAUSE also print this, you can uh, review the syllabus along um, with me. But before we get into all that, look at this beautiful fall day in this setting that we're in. And um, one of the, the beauties of um, all the digital tools that are available to us in online education or even classroom education is that we can, um, we can do things like this. But what, um, what I'd like to do is introduce myself to you. I am Dr. Joan and I'm going to be your instructor for ISDS 2000 Business Statistics. And that is true for the L01 section. L always means online. Or if you're in the 101 section, which means that we're meeting during the uh, daytime hours uh, to go over business statistics. So the first thing you're going to notice about this syllabus, how can I show you this, is that it's kind of thick. It's actually thick enough where it has a table of contents. What do you think about that? Ooh, sounds like a lot of rules and regulations, doesn't it? Well, maybe so. But um, uh, one, the reason I want to talk to you about this uh, for the traditional class uh, in advance and for the online students today, Saturday is actually the first day of classes, is because I want to give you a chance to look at it. And I also want you to understand that if I took the time to go through and make this uh, what I call survival guide, a detailed packet for you, that everything that you need is going to be right here in this syllabus. Okay, And really, um, less than restrictive, I think it's actually your guide guidelines for success and uh, makes for a successful environment, uh, whether we're online or whether we're in the classroom. Uh, to tell you the truth, folks that are in the classroom have some more things because we look at attendance and participation um, as well. Now, as I look at the front, I'm going to tell you students the, the key to success, whether you're reading a book or whether you're reading what I would call a handbook of how you're going to do well in this class, is to look at the key points in here. What do you need to know? What do you need to get out of this? syllabus and I'm just going to talk to you about a couple of the key points so that we can get going okay the first thing that I see here is the and my fingers are dry I apologize I keep looking looking my fingers um is the instructor contact information and that looks kind of important to me because the truth of the matter is as you're working on things you know we have such a 24-hour work cycle nowadays don't we I mean you're probably going to jobs you've got your family you might be working at 10 o'clock at night on homework problems and it seems if you wait uh, in the online class you don't want to wait because we're not going to gather for uh, in-classroom meeting and in the traditional class if we meet Monday and Wednesdays it's a long time from after class on Wednesday to our class meeting on Monday and you hate to waste that time we all do don't we okay so how do you get in touch with me whether you're online or whether you're in the classroom using the internet is essential and I use our college class management tool which is called pause and I'm going to include the link uh, to our pause course and pause has its own email system that email system is different than our regular college email regular college email is for things like um, there's been a room change in your classroom or your financial aid uh, has been approved yay or um, you know all kinds of things like that hopefully you didn't get it your class has been canceled um, or anything like that but hopefully you're getting messages like this from me your instructor right the way to get in touch with me about course related information, questions, you know, what, where is my textbook? Um, I can't solve this particular problem. You're going to have those questions, is using pause email. I have that information in my syllabus. It's right up here at the top. There's even a short video clip that explains to you how to use pause email if you're not familiar. So you can go to that link. I use videos all the time, and you can learn how to use pause email. So you want to do that, and that is important. You will get a response, you know, 
not every Saturday, but I, I tell you for sure, if um, if I'm in class, which my class schedule this week, uh, this semester is real hectic on Tuesdays and Thursdays, you know, you may miss a lot of time before I can call you on the telephone to return a call. And then we have a lot of, um, especially in statistics, where we need to see what we're talking about. So email is going to be your best bet. Use the pause email. Okay, now one of the number one questions every student wants to know in our syllabus, what are the materials that I need? Well, I've got your textbook information on the syllabus and you can go there and look at that. Now, in addition to the textbook, you will need an access code to an online website called Connect. You might have heard of this before. Uh, Connect is a, a product by McGraw-Hill. They're the publisher of our textbook. Now. If you are retaking the class, it might be necessary for you to uh, renew your code. If you have difficulty with that, you can call the McGraw-Hill help number and they will help you with that. Uh, you can uh, renew it online uh, as well. So, uh, so you are going to need that. If you buy the textbook bundle in the bookstore, uh, the, the code, this little access code that gets converted is kind of the way you pay for your login ID is going to be bundled in with your textbook. I do have in some instructions for you on how to set that up. However, once you go to the correct website, you're going to find it really self-explanatory. They'll say, click here for how to set up your access code and you just click there. They even have short little videos. Real easy process. Now, what if you're waiting on your financial aid and you don't have your textbook and all that yet? McGraw-Hill is nice enough to have a 21-day free trial. It includes access to the online textbook and it includes access to your problem solving. So you have no excuses not to get started. In other words, you can get started now and you need to get started now. Now within this 21 day time frame you've got to get everything worked out because you need to get your book, you need to get that access code, you're going to need it for the entire semester. It's where your tests are, they're in Connect, it's where your homework is, it's in Connect. We have some other assignments as well, but without that Connect code you have big problems, okay? So get in there, you, you need that to succeed, folks, right? This is going to be some, some information that we definitely need. Now, you can read more about that in the syllabus. Got all the information. One final note, though, about, you know, 21-day free trial if you need it, um, the, that the code is bundled in your textbook. If you have a credit card, it can even be a prepaid credit card. You can purchase access to Connect Online. But what I want to tell you is that every different section of our statistics class, that includes sections from last semester, that includes the different selection sections this semester. For example, our daytime section, our online section, our nighttime section, they all start from a different web address. Where do you get this web address? You log in to PAUSE, our course management system. When you click the link to enter our class, you will see in a bright yellow box the web address that you need for Connect. You should bookmark this on your home computer, but it's always there, so if you're in the library someplace like that, you can quickly log into PAUSE, copy and paste our Connect web address from PAUSE to another browser window. Okay? If you do work, and you start at, at the wrong web address, what's going to happen is um, you're, you might be completing a course in, I don't know, Montana, Florida, Texas, and I can't give you points for that. So no points for doing work in the wrong section. Make sure you're in the right section. Hey, that reminds me, have I introduced myself to you? I don't think so. I've been doing some of these videos today, and so I, I think I jumped in without introducing myself. I'm Dr. Joan. I'm going to be your instructor. Did I say that already for, for business statistics? We're going to get to know each other well this semester as you work on these problems. Okay, now, there is also a lecture capture system, which we can occasionally use to, um, or, or use, I, I think, as much as we want. There are some limitations on it, but um, depending on when you buy your book bundle, there might be an access code in your book bundle uh, for the Tegrity video capture system. You don't need that. You can sell it. You're not going to need it. We are going to use Tegrity probably, but um, 
the college has purchased that and you now access Tegrity from inside PAWS. The good news is that's free to you. Okay, so look inside of PAWS for links to Tegrity. Uh, if students are having difficulty on a problem and it takes me some time to explain, I might post that up there on um, yeah, through Tegrity. Integrity. I actually use a lot of these YouTube videos because students find them easy to access and typically short and focused. This first one will be a little long. I apologize for that. Okay, so three things you need. Textbook, connect code, don't need integrity because that's going to be inside of pause. But you got no excuse, hit the ground running on that. Okay, I give you some tips for success in the syllabus. I encourage you to read those uh, designed for success. Now, will you need a calculator for the class? Uh, probably so. Uh, I don't mandate to you the kind of calculator that you must have. Um, I used to say that my favorite kind of calculator has always been a Hewlett Packard. You probably have a textra, Texas Instrument uh, 8384 model, so you'd hate for me to tell you to go buy a new one, right? A lot of money invested. So you can use that calculator. You can use whatever calculator you have. Here's the key. You need to know how to use it. You probably have the manual. If not, go to Google, go to any search engine and type in your calculator. You can probably find the manual online. I do have some tips and tricks along the way throughout the semester where I might be able to help you a little bit, but let me tell you this, the reason that I don't get into the whole calculator thing is because there are a lot of different types of calculators. So whatever kind you've chosen, you need to know how to use it. Get the book, look up things, they have table of contents, you can flip and say, how do I do this, right? Okay. You're going to be fine with this. One of the main tools that I use in terms of a calculator, because this is business statistics, you're going to be in the business world. And one of the tools that business people like you to know how to use is Excel. So you're going to have some extra credit assignments that actually encourage you to use Excel, show you the steps for using Excel as a business tool. If you've already taken MIS 2749, you may already have some Excel skills. If not, no worries. The extra credit assignments give you step by step by step. Number one complaint from students on the extra credit is, wow, this is a lot of steps. This is going to take me years to complete. Then they get into it and they start reading and they go, oh, she actually tells us to press the enter key and that's a step. Okay, So it's a lot of steps. It's detailed and you'll do fine and I think you'll enjoy it when you get into those. Okay, now if you're going to be in the classroom, um, a very important note to you, and online students, this might be important to you too if you need to come to a, a classroom session uh, because maybe you're having difficulty, um, you cannot use your cell phone for a calculator. You already know why, right? One second you're doing the calculator, the next second you're texting. Oh, I know you believe that you can multitask. And then you know what you do? Question, question. What, uh, what did you tell, when are you going to tell us about this? And we literally just finished talking about it. And then when I tell you that, you're upset because you didn't hear it. And if you didn't hear it, you know we didn't cover it. But you know why you didn't hear it? We'll talk about some statistics for this. You didn't hear it because you can't multitask. Can't multitask. You can timeshare, go back and forth between tasks. And what that means is that when you're on one, you forget the other. There's a lot of science behind that. Trust me, no multitasking. In the classroom, you need a dedicated calculator, not um, your cell phone. Okay. Also, in-class students, make sure you look at the policies on electronic devices in the classroom. No laptops, none of that stuff. Um, I am a technology person, and it pains me a little bit to say that. But what I need you to do, we're a small group, and I need you focused on me, and I need you to pay attention to the, to the class and to the discussion. You'll do better. I'll do better. We'll have a great class section. It's 90 minutes. You can do without for 90 minutes. Then run to your laptop, start typing your notes, do whatever you need to do, but not in the classroom. No iPads, no calculator, or, no calculators, no iPads, no cell phones. Okay, no, um, no laptops. Okay, we just can't do it. Wish we could, just can't do it. So online's also, if you plan on kind of uh, crossing over, uh, you need to know that coming in. Okay, some of the tools you'll need. Um, I do use PowerPoint because I do problem solving step by step by demonstrating it to you by PowerPoint. If you want to look at those slides, I make them available to you, but you'll need PowerPoint to see them. Excel, great tool for the extra credit. You do have one required assignment um, that 
uses Excel. All the college computers have that software installed on them, so you can come to campus, do the assignment there, and upload it. Now, how do you earn points? How do you do that in this class? Well, you just look at the syllabus. You've got that table of contents. You can flip right to it at any time throughout the semester because you're going to keep this syllabus close to you throughout the entire semester. Probably a three ring binder uh, or at least a folder to put that into to keep up with it. It's all outlined here. First thing that I talk about here are your exams. We have a lot of exams in this class. Students are kind of used to a midterm and a final and in other classes I teach we do that but in statistics that tends to be uh, not good because by the time we realize that you have a problem um, it, the, all is lost and so we don't want to be there. What we're going to do is we're going to do chapters 1 through 4 and then we're going to have a test. For many of you maybe for a lot of you. Um, chapters 1 through 4 are going to be easy. Caution, caution. Can we do, uh, I need some kind of um, uh, special effect here to, um, to indicate to you how important I, I am, uh, how important I'm this is going to be about there. How about that? How about that? Caution, caution. Um, chapters 1 through 4 are going to be a lot of review. Mean, median, and mode are things that may be and, uh, familiar to, to a lot of you. It really just depends, and that's why we go through these, these chapters. We're going to be reading graphs. We're going to be talking about the information that comes out of them. You need to understand not just how to calculate the mean, median, and mode, but kind of what that means. Standard deviation is going to be one of your bigger calculations. These are in the early chapters, and we're going to start building up from there. Here's what I want you to understand and the biggest tip for success that I can give you. Students sometimes kind of check out mentally during chapters 1 through 4 and then chapter 5 hits them like a brick wall because you think you know it all. Don't make that mistake. It's going to get harder and this class is cumulative. We're going to build and build and build on the knowledge. Stay current. In this class more than any other, when I say to you, you need to be working on statistics every day, I really do mean it. It's how you're going to succeed. You're going to be working in Connect every day. You might be doing a learning project. You're going to be doing something in our class every day. It's how you're going to get the most out of it. And you need this, folks, for later on when you transfer to that university so that they can continue to build on this foundation. This is the first day of the rest of your life in statistics. Welcome! It's going to be fun. You're going to like it, okay? Now, each of our tests are 50 points, and you have one drop grade. You only get one attempt to take these tests. Let's say your computer blows up, you're struck by lightning. That was your one drop grade. Let's say you have an emergency, a family emergency. That happens. I understand that that happens. Tell me about it. I'm definitely sympathetic for you, but it's your one drop grade. These things happen. Here's why I don't encourage you and don't set it up so that you can go make try to do makeups and, and whatnot. The reason is you've got to stay current in this material. You need to do a little bit every day. If you're doing the homework and you have one bad bump in the road and you do poorly on one test, water under the bridge. Let it go. Focus on the new material. That's your key to success. Okay. What if you have two bumps in the road? Um, the truth of the matter is you're falling so far behind at that point that you probably need to drop or withdraw and come back and see me next semester. It happens, folks. It happens. It does not make you a bad person. What I'm telling you is my focus is the knowledge, and, and we need to focus on the knowledge, and that's what I want you to have because you will use this as you continue. Marketing majors, everything is statistics now, uh, management. Every, you're examining statistics, so I want you to get that knowledge. So stay current with me. If something goes wrong on the exams, that's your drop grade, you know, uh, don't worry about it. Now, my personal strategy would be to do well on all the exams uh, early on because, as we know, Chapter 1 is the easy stuff, right? Things that you might be a little familiar with. As we get into Chapters 11 and 12, it's going to be a little bit harder. So you need to stay focused, and, and then later on that very last exam, maybe that could be your drop grade. What a concept. Okay. I'm talking long, so let me go a little bit further. Learning projects. Learning projects, the very first one is Excel. Now, remember your extra credit assignments are going to use Excel, but your first learning uh, 
project is going to have you make a simple graph in Excel. You're going to love it. I used to watch students hand draw these graphs on paper. Oh my goodness, the time, because the lines, they need to be straight. They would have to be straight. Excel is going to do this for you in the snap of a finger. Okay, In that way, you can focus on the meaning of the data. All the instructions are out there for you in the pause drop box. Okay? But those are some things that we're going to do. Now, as we continue, your other learning project assignments are going to be to watch some YouTube videos. They're not all me. Uh, I know, it's sad, right? There are instructors all over the country, all over the world who post videos very much like this one where they're doing problem solving. They show you how to use calculators like TI-83s and TI-84s. Sometimes they show you how to use Excel. And so um, why not take advantage of this great knowledge resource that's out there? Tell you my motive behind making you do those, watch those YouTube videos as part of your learning project assignments. The reason is because as you continue in your academic career and even in your business career, you may be asked to do something you don't currently know how to do. Why not go to YouTube and see if you can find somebody else who already knows how to do it and has shared that knowledge with you. So you're going to do that. Now, I mentioned Connect. I'm still looking at your uh, syllabus and the Connect assignments. You do have assignment sets. And let me tell you very quickly about those. Um, in the olden days, when I went to school, um, the instructor would say, go out there and work on problems one, three, five, seven, nine. What do those things have in common? They're the odd numbers. Why did they assign odd numbers? Because the answers were in the back of the book. So you know what we would do? We'd flip to the answer. Does that mean you know how to solve the problem? Nope. But I tell you what it does mean, if you took the time to solve the problem, looking at the answer helped you to realize that you did it correctly. The only problem is if I change the numbers, could you do it again? Connect is an online tool that lets us do exactly that. You're going to see a word problem. It's going to have numbers in it. The person sitting next to you is going to see the same problem, but they'll have different numbers. If I give you three, four, five problems in a, in a specific set, the person sitting next to you might get those problems presented in a different order. If you keep doing the homework, you will get those problems presented to you in a variety of orders with different numbers. At the end, Connect will tell you the answer. In fact, Connect has a neat little feature called Check My Work, where once you put the number in there, you can click it to see if you got the answer right. Folks, all the time I see people that sit there and start typing in numbers and guessing. The answer must be 1.2, check my work. The answer must be 0.82, check my work, check my work, 0.83, check my work, 0.84, check my work, 0.85. You're not learning anything. Here's the problem with that. These connect assignments, they prepare you for the exam. If you're working on the connect and you're understanding all the connect, you are preparing for the exam and you'll do well on the exam. Here's a great thing about these connect problems. I got a deal for you. The deal is you have unlimited attempts on those problems. In the same way that in the olden days when I was in school, I had unlimited ability to solve the exact same problem and flip to the back. But your problems, every time you go in to work it, the numbers will change. Okay. So unlimited attempts on the problem. But if I give you all that, you have to make a commitment to me, and that commitment is that you can score an 85% or better. If you stop on yourself, you quit on yourself at 75%, then that would be a C. Why would you quit at yourself on that, at that point? That means you probably won't do very well on the exam either. So I'm going to count that as a zero. That doesn't even count. If you get an 85 then you earn 85% of the points. If you do 86, then you've earned 86%. 87, 87, 92, 92, 100, 100. Excellent. Whatever score you elevate it to above 85%, that's the score, that's the points that you're going to earn out of 10 points, I think the homework is. Okay, so you want to repeat these and get the highest score. But I never, ever want you to think that once you get a good score that you shouldn't continue to practice. So once you make your highest score, I never look at the other ones that are lower. So the first time you attempt it, you work so hard you make 100%. The next time you didn't really have time, you were just in a hurry, and you made like 50%. I don't care. I'm only going to record your highest grade. So the highest grade, but it must be 
85% or above. Now in pause, I'll always record the grade that you actually earned, and that's just for official record keeping purposes. Uh, I manually type those. I look at them in Connect and I after the due date has passed, don't look for immediate update, that doesn't exist, and I go over to pause and I type those numbers in. If you made a 72%, I'll type in you know, 7.2 because it's out of 10 points, okay? Um, it doesn't mean you earn 7.2 because what's the requirement? 85 or above, 8.5 8 you know, or above, 85%. So don't quit on yourself. We'll talk more about that later. Make 85% or above. Repeat those Connect homework assignments so that you are preparing for the exam. You'll see the answers at the end. Connect gives you solutions. If you don't understand, email me. Let's talk about it, right? The more descriptive you can be in your emails, the more help I can provide back to you. We'll talk more about that. Okay. Finally, you'll see an SLO exam. Um, more details on that later. It is a test that's required across all the business classes. It's required by the college. We participate in that, so we'll talk more about that later. And then extra credit assignments. Read the stuff in detail. I'm just hitting the highlights with you uh, right now. Um, there is a section called, How Do I Calculate My Grade? You know what? You're going to keep this syllabus to the end of the semester, and you're going to be saying, Dr. Joan, Dr. Joan, what is my grade? And I'm going to say, this is how you figure it out. And so keep this so that you can go back and figure it out. Then you'll know. In fact, you can keep up with it throughout the semester, right? Okay. Now, after that, there are pages that really explain in detail um, the, the various assignments. No makeup exams, no late work. Once that, that system cuts you off, um, you're done, okay? You can email me and ask for an extension. I tell you now, you're not going to get it because in the workforce, um, when, when your supervisor tells you that the, the assignment is due, the project is due, it's due. If you don't have it done by that time, you're going to lose the client, lose the deal, lose money for your company, and you might lose your job, okay? So we don't want to do that. Lay out a calendar. When you see these assignments, the due dates are in connect. The due dates are also in pause. And make sure that you're done well in advance. I have students that email me throughout the semester and they'll say, the problem is you had the due date set at 11.55 and the clock on my house said 11.55, but I was already knocked out. Well, you know what it is? It's that your clock is wrong. Your clock is not synchronized with the system. How do you do that? You, I don't know, because the problem is you're cutting it too close. Get your work done in advance. A day or two in advance is ideal. Hours in advance is, is you know, if you have to. Um, but if you're working it right up to the wire, you kind of know going in that you've laid the groundwork for disaster. A little bit every day. Every day work on statistics. You can do it. You can do it. I do explain in, in here with the Connect assignments, the requirement for the 85%, the unlimited attempts, and the fact that I only take your highest grade. All benefits to you, right? Okay. Tips for success in terms of repeating it. Details on uh, the SLO exam. Now, how do you communicate with me? You could send me a video. I might like that. That would be great. You could show me how to solve a problem, or you could show me what you're doing, and then maybe I could help you. But email, especially pause email, even the traditional class folks, this is going to be your fastest way to communicate. There's a long time between class meetings and the online section. We don't have class meetings. Definitely you need to ask questions. You're going to run into that. Maybe early on, not so much, but the further we go into the semester, the kinds of questions you're going to have are going to increase. If you email me and say, I don't get problem number one, I don't know what problem number one is. Remember that it's different for everybody because the problems are shuffled. Also, I don't know what your numbers are. So tell me, what formula were you using? What values were you trying to multiply? Maybe you just made a typo in your calculator. That can happen and get you the wrong answer, right? The more you tell me, the more I'm able to point you in the right direction. And I really am glad to do that. I really am. So when I ask you questions back, I'm not trying to put you off. Um, I'm just trying to understand so that I can assist you. Now, what if your question is, I don't even know how to begin this thing. I mean, oh my goodness, I've been working on this for an hour. I'm just staring at it. I can work with that. I'm, I can help point you into the right direction, but I'm not going to give you the answer. And you know that, right? We can talk about, well, have you considered this formula? Have you considered this formula? Okay. Pause email is the way to con communicate with me. Telephone is going to be significantly slower. Office visits, 
Uh, it, it depends because I'm in class and I do have meetings and things like that. Pause email is your best um, hope. There are some very specific pieces of information, especially with the statistics classes. I tell people this every semester, and uh, there's a lot of uh, delay as, as I try to remind you of it. So here it is in the syllabus. That way you'll have it. You can use it as a checklist, and you'll be much faster on getting the answers that you need. Now. Also on this line, as I look through some of the important notes, and, and I'm going to leave uh, some of the rest of these things for you to go through, um, I want to talk about the respectful attitude that we need to have with each other at all times. And this is whether we're in email, or this is whether we're in the classroom, or in an office meeting, whatever it is. Um, we have a professional relationship, and as your instructor, I'm going to lead you through this course so that we can have a great environment, whether that's an online environment or whether that's a classroom environment. There are rules that we work with when we're in a group especially. Um, those rules might be different than your home. Okay, They might be something that's more along the lines of what you're going to see in a professional job. Uh, you may have a job right now, and um, those rules may be very different. Those those rules are explained here. One of the things I'll ask you right up front is to call me doctor, to address me by my title, which is doctor. I do allow you to call me by my first name. My last name is a little bit of a mouthful, so you can call me Dr. Joan. Okay, Doctor, a lot of uh, community college students do not realize that um, in academia, when someone has earned a, a an advanced degree, which is what a PhD is, an advanced degree, that the title of respect is doctor. As you transfer to university environments, you will have predominantly uh, professors whose title is doctor. I want you to learn that now, and I want you to practice that respect now. Don't address me as hey. Don't just start talking. And address yourself with respect, too. And this is what I mean by this. That little letter I, that's what you do when you text somebody. That means that you are a little bitty. You don't think anything of yourself. You're definitely not communicating on a business level. Le level. Capital I is a proper pronoun, and it's how you refer to yourself. Um, proper punctuation proper capitalization. Um, I'm not asking you to use the, the Queen's English. You don't have to go old school with thee, thou, thou art. You do need to take a moment and not send me a text message. It's just a, a manner of respect. I got an email a little bit ago uh, from a student, and um, it, it said something about uh, what book. That's all it said, what, W-H-T. Now, what, how should we act then in, in a little while, you know, maybe at the end of the semester when somebody needs a letter of recommendation? You want a scholarship committee or a uh, job, uh, internship, something like that, and you want me to tell them what a great person you are, but you showed me less than that, and I only know what you're showing me. Show me your best. I want to give you a great class, and I, I really do strive uh, to do that. Some of you who've had me before in other classes know that I do work very hard at that. I want your best back. That means take a moment. Don't text me from the car when your mind is not really on it. Sit down, type me an email. I'm going to respond to you um, also professionally. That way we'll have a great semester together. I really am your number one fan, and I work hard for you. And But I do just ask that, that we treat each other respectfully. I think that's fair. You think that's fair? I think that's fair. Okay, we can do that. I think that's going to be all right. Um, if you're not sure what I mean by some of those things of respect and all, take a couple minutes, go through the syllabus. It's a quick read. It may seem like a lot, but if you're doing it already, then it's not a big deal. If you don't know, then you need to know. So go through and do that. Now, I am also going to send you a schedule. It's laid out in a week-by-week -week basis, and it tells you what you need to be working on. Now, if you have multiple classes, you might need to finish some assignments, start working on them and finish them before the technical, the actual due date. You'll see due dates everywhere. You'll see them in pause. You'll see them in connect. And this uh, schedule, which is a couple pages because I, I tried to tell you, you need to be working on your learning project. You need to be working on connect. You need to be doing this. You need to be doing that. So use this as a guide to keep you on track. I know this was a bit of a long video. Um, for some of you, I will see you in class. Uh, this Monday is our first class meeting, and at that time I'll ask you uh, specifically if you have questions about the syllabus and if there's things that we need to go um, over. For the online class, 
this is your introduction, but you have a lot of reading to do. You've got to be a self-starter. You've got to get in there to pause, start looking at the content links. Uh, online students in particular, you complete the online orientation for pause as an online student that is required. Um, but I look forward to a great semester. I hope I haven't scared you off. Um, these are just the housekeeping rules that ensure that we do have a great semester. Remember, you need to get into Connect, get set up so you can start working on those problems. If they seem easy at first, it's a cumulative class. It's going to get harder as we go through the semester. Don't put us on the back burner. Okay, um, where do you find your Connect web address? Go into Pause, Course Homepage, bright yellow box. I'll be talking to you again soon. The classroom folks, I'll see you in the classroom. Online people, I do these videos um, frequently to, to touch base with you and to see how uh, things are going. So we'll be talking to you soon. I'm looking forward to a great semester. Good luck.